What's up, everybody? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and I'm about to speak with Felipe Nover, the Tough Season 8 finalist. He is 11-6-1, and he is set to face Henan Barrao in the co-main event of UFC Fight Night 95 on September 24th. So let's give Felipe a call, find out how this fight came to be, and see how his training camp's going, and what can we expect from him in Brazil. Hello. Mr. Felipe Nover. Yes, how you doing, Eddie? I'm well, sir. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. Everything's swell. All right, man. Well, thank you for taking out the time. You are 11-6-1. You're back in the UFC. Uh, you've won four of your last five. Uh, how are things, man? Things are things are great, man. Um, I um uh, just finishing up uh, an afternoon morning session in the city, and uh, I'm feeling great. I feel like this this big fight coming up is is uh, the biggest one of my career, and I feel uh, I feel confident and ready to go, man. I'm feeling strong. Okay, now of course the first time the UFC audience saw you was on the Ultimate Fighter season eight. Absolutely ran shop on the show, uh, made it to the finals, um, lost the decision to Efren Escudero, um, left the UFC, came back, and uh, I mean, it's kind of a different landscape. I mean, what are your thoughts on like the current state of the UFC? Like it's been sold and USADA and the IV ban. I mean, what are your thoughts on the new stuff? Uh, I mean... Things, uh, things definitely changed, and, and uh, I think uh, some things changed for the better. I think that getting stricter on the, uh, you know, the use of uh, potential uh, drug abusers and cheaters, I think that that's a good thing. Where we, we're really, we're really making sure that you no know, one, no, we have a level playing field. So, you know, uh, that that's a good thing. Um, you know, and I think it's it's gone really mainstream since two thousand eight. Uh, when I first started in, in the Ultimate Fighter and then even fought a couple times and lost those, I mean, people really didn't know what the UFC was. And it's still progressing. We still have a lot of work to do um, to keep getting to a bigger market and a bigger audience. But uh, it's definitely changed. We got new stars. We got, you know, um, the uh, we got so many popular fighters. And, and uh, I'm just glad to be in the mix. And I'm glad to be uh, still doing what I love to do. You know, a lot of my training partners, um, I'd say a lot of the guys I look up to, some of them retired, you know, and, and here I am, I feel like uh, balancing uh, a passion and a dream of mine along with a full-time career as a nurse, and uh, and I'm hustling, and I'm, and I'm grinding, and, uh, and I still have this dream. So okay. you know, I'm 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 excited, man. This is this is a big deal for me. <laughs> awesome, man. So you're still a full-time registered nurse in New York. Yes, uh, I'm a full-time registered nurse. I'm uh, certified in cardiac cath. Uh, I work in oh, a wow. pretty intense environment. Yeah, we I assist uh, uh, interventional cardiologists. We put stents in people's hearts, um, oh, you know, wow. and I do that full-time. And um, and along with that, I'm training every day, before work, after work, during work. I'm always training, so I got no excuses, man. I'm always, always grinding. Okay. Now, how much of your uh, <laughs> nursing training do, does – really help you as far as like recovery goes and injury treatment and things of that nature? Yeah, I mean, I got into nursing because a few reasons, but I, I love the human body and learning about the human body, nutrition, healing, anatomy, physiology. And, you know, and now that I've been doing, I've been a nurse for over 10 years now, and um, I work with some of the best people in the world who know about the human body. So, um, you know, I have full access to whatever I need. If I need to, hey, doc, I need, need an opinion about this or, you know, I think my foot might be, you know, as an MMA fighter, I always have tons of stuff bothering me, and every fighter knows that. So at least I, I definitely have access to uh, all the medical professionals that I need, and, and, and I could give a good opinion on even my own body when I, when I have symptoms. Okay. Now, what do you think of the whole earlier weigh-ins with the, the ban of IVs? Do you think um, that was a good move, or do you think intravenous is kind of the way to go as far as rehydrating? Um, as, as far as rehydrating, I, I was a fan of the IVs, believe it or not. 
for years. I'd even I do my own IV on myself. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, but I'm a I'm a I'm a stickler to the rules. And then if the UFC wants to ban it, and the reason why they want to ban it is because um, if you uh, they believe that if you uh, IV you could flush out some some um, performance enhancing drugs. Um, it could it could mask um, some performance enhancing drugs. So why not cut it all together? And then I mean I, I I'm a I'm a def, I'm definitely a 145er and. I, I seeked out my last couple of fights. I seeked out professional nutritionist um, uh, and professional dieter George Lockhart helped me out in my two camps, and I know exactly how to get to 145 now. And I don't even need to do IV, so I feel great. Um, and uh, you know, I am a, I am happy that they will allow you to weigh in the morning up. I just got the email again um, from the UFC that they said on my fight on the 24th, the day before which usually they have the weigh-ins 24 hours before. Now they're going to allow you to weigh in officially in the morning. So this will give you uh, like a 36-hour time period instead of 24 hours to replenish. Um, you know, and, and I think that's safe. Um, so, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of moving forward and, and having a level playing field. Okay, awesome. Now, before you came back to the UFC, you went 2-1 and one in Bellator. Now, how come you didn't, uh, you didn't stay on for Bellator? Um, I could tell you, uh, at the time, you know, my dream was to get back in the UFC and I think that the UFC is the, has the highest calibers of, of all the fight organizations and, um, you know, and I, I think, uh, uh, my last fight with Bellator at the time, I had some negotiating issues for, uh, for another contract with them and, um, you know, they're a great company and I'm not bad mouthing any company and, and I decided, you know what? Uh, Bellator is not going to sign me at the time, and even the UFC wasn't looking at me yet again. So I said, "Hey, I'm going to make some calls." I I got some friends in the local circuit, and um, you know, I, and I linked up with my original um, local show, and I got uh, a fight in Ring of Combat, and I fought for the title, uh, the lightweight title. I think even featherweight. I can't even remember a couple years ago, and uh, I did well with them. And I just knew I needed a couple wins, and and I can and I could represent myself to the UFC. Okay. Now, what would, like a new fighter, what would you offer them as far as advice, as far as, you know, going on a show like The Ultimate Fighter? I mean, it's a real demanding show. It's a real kind of tough way to get into the UFC. I mean, would you, do you recommend maybe going to a regional scene and, and working there and then, you know, trying to get, get discovered yeah. that way? Or do you encourage people to go on the show? I, I think you have to explore all options as a fighter. So, um, you know, don't don't just say, hey, I'm going to do this road, I'm going to take another road. I would, you got to get those fights in, obviously, to get that experience, get those amateur fights, get those professional fights. And if you, if you have the personality that you could talk on the microphone and you're not scared of the cameras, which is great, because that's marketability in the future. You know, um, yeah. Besides, besides uh, being a fighter and you know and, and performing, they they want you to be able to, to market. You know, they want to see a story. They it's just like any any other show business type of situation if you're on television. So um, I would present yourself, tell them the story. Everybody has a story. You just got to tell them what you're doing in your life, why you fight, and um and pursue it. If if the Ultimate Fighter tryouts come about, go out there and, and have a good time and present yourself and and. Just be ready to talk in front of the camera. Don't choke up, and be ready to choke mother effers out when it comes down <laughs> to fighting in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now yeah. you made it back to the UFC. What kind of uh, led to that? You, you, of course, you uh, you went to some local scenes. You did your thing. I mean, did they come at you, or did you contact them? Uh, well, I I, um, I heard that. Uh, I mean. I heard that they're going to have a UFC in Manila at right, like the week after I won a uh, ring of combat title. Um, I heard they're going to have a UFC Manila and with my Filipino background and, um, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, but as a kid, I've always gone back to the Philippines. My mom's from the Philippines. And, uh, I just started telling my friends and family and my fans to, to Hey, listen, I sh I gotta be on this card. And, uh, I, uh, I, uh, spoke to my manager, uh, and he, um, he was like, "Listen, let me let me make some calls and see what they what they say." And and I got a contract. So and I and I had my my, my first fight back in Manila. It was like a dream come true. Um, fighting in front of in front 
of my people pretty much and, and it was amazing. I, I have a house out there too, so I didn't even have to like stay at the hotel too much. Okay, nice. <laughs> uh, I felt right at home over there too, so it was an amazing experience. Okay. Now, how many fights did you sign on for? I have a four fight what deal. Okay, so that you'll have a fourth one after Hen and Barrow. Okay, yeah. well, it just so happens 21 days after your Hen and Barrow fight, the UFC will be back in Manila. Yes, I know. <laughs> Are there, is there any chances of getting you on that card? Uh, I, I I love fighting, and, um, you know, I, I take things piece by piece, though, and I, I'd love to continue at it. Uh, all goes well. You know, and, and everything goes as planned. I come out, no injuries and stuff. Man, I'd love to fight in Manila again uh, 21 days later. But uh, even more so, I'd love to fight in Madison Square Garden, which is uh, right here in my real hometown of, of New York. Okay. So, and, and I, and so, I mean, you know, we'll see. I mean, I got got high hopes for everything, and um, and I'm, I'm working extra hard toward these goals. I'm not looking past my opponent at all. This is the biggest biggest fight in my my career so yeah absolutely but, uh, now, well, how did uh, how yeah, did this fight well, even come to be how did uh how'd you get presented Henan Barral in Brazil no less uh, I, I, I guess uh, my manager helped my manager did some did some work and uh and uh, I think he's a he's a big name I told my manager I'm ready to go and uh, month after month I haven't fought uh, since I took a loss in Vegas um, uh, last year. Uh, I think it was in December, and uh, okay, that was to Kugov. And I, and, you know, that was uh, yeah to Kugov. It was a tough fight for me, and um, you know it was kind of close. But uh, you know I took a loss there, split decision. I think I remember, and um, you know, and 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 I I, sh I kept training, and I said, hey man, you know this guy was a tough tough opponent. I said, you know, let me get an opponent with a name too, um, and here we go, <laughs> you know, former world champion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A, a big, tough, tough uh, order. Now, what are your kind of thoughts on his striking? He's kind of known for his grappling, but he's also, you know, a Nova Unyao guy. So what do you think of his striking? I think, uh, I mean, he's, he's the best in the world at what he does. And, uh, you know, I watch a lot of tape. I'm, I'm a huge fan of analysis, statistics, and just watching stuff and, and seeing person's actions and things. And I watch, I, I, you know what's crazy? I'm a fan of his too before before this. I even went yeah. to watch him live when he fought Dillashaw mm. um, in Newark. I was there at the Prudential Center. Okay. Um, so, you know, but uh, I think his striking is, is great. I think he's a super well-rounded guy. Super well-rounded guy. And, uh, and he better hope that he comes in the best he possibly can. Because I'm coming in 10 times better than I was my last fight. Okay, now, of course, you're a BJJ black belt yourself. You're training with Henzo Gracie. Uh, yeah. On the Ultimate Fighter, it was Sub City for you. I mean, <laughs> who's the better grappler in this fight? You or Burrell? I mean, it, could, it could, be, could be either of us. I'm not too sure. I think it's going to be a question of who's going to be the, the, the better MMA fighter. Um, but... You know the guy. The guy in his last fight, he shot in a lot. He failed a couple of takedowns. I think he he might uh, have some issues in the 145 division dealing with a guy like Jeremy Stevens, who I think is not that big of a 45er. I think I'm bigger than than Jeremy, um, and I think that um, Burrell Burrell's really a 135er, and he just doesn't want to cut the weight, which is fine. So he's going to fight a bigger guy who's longer and taller and stronger, and that's going to be me. Okay. So. Now, I mean, with the loss for Hendon Barrow, that's that's three in a row. What do you think would be happen to him after that? Uh, if, if he he comes in there and loses, you said. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, um, that's kind of tough, you know. And I'm not even, you know, I read the comments that I'm not, you know, why is Barrow fighting over? Um, you know, Sean Shelby set this up, and the UFC wanted this, so they might. They have to have some type of analysis. They want an exciting fight. I think there's going to be an exciting fight. Um, I know the UFC, uh, we'll see what happens with them. I don't know what his contract states, but I mean, the guy's a former world champion. But if I go out there and, and, I, and I finish the fight and win, you know, I know the UFC is going to like that a lot. Or if we even have a good back and forth battle, we'll see what happens. You know, um, I'm hoping 
I haven't even thought about him after the fight, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, yeah. of course, we said you're training with Henzo Gracie. You doing anything special for, for Burrell specifically? Uh, I mean, you know, without giving out my complete game plan and sure. what I'm going to do out there, I've just been getting better as a complete fighter. Uh, you know, I'm working out with, with top-level guys in the East Coast and I think the world, so, you know, um, uh, besides that, Henzo, besides working out with Henzo Gracie, I, I work out at Church Street Boxing with Jason Strout. Um, one of my good friends is Jared Gordon, who's also uh, a featherweight and a lightweight, um, you know, working out with Marlon Moraes, okay. current world champion at Bantamweight Division, a straight-up killer. Um, yeah. Sparring with him and, and Andre Harris, who's a Titan FC featherweight champion, the meanest meanest wrestler uh, you could possibly work with, Levon Max Chavilli in Long Island. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I work with, with top of the line guys. I'm working with professional boxers. I'm working with some of the best sporty jiu jitsu guys you could possibly set on the mat. So between Eddie Cummings, Gary Gordon, uh, <laughs> Gary uh, Tonin, Eddie, uh, and. Uh, Ryan, Gordon Ryan, I mean, these. We, I have all the opportunity in front of me. I have all the, the coaches and the staff and, and, and everything. I just need to go out there and do do my plan, you know? Okay, now, what's your prediction? How do you see it going down? I, I see I see me finishing him in the uh, first or second round, either with a submission or a knockout. Okay, awesome. Now... Because it's not going to decision in Brazil. If it goes to the decision, even if every round is a 10-9 or 10-8 round in my favor, Brazil's <laughs> going to give him the decision. So I can tell you that much. Ah, uh, that, you know, <laughs> Brazil is kind of notorious for their iffy judging. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. So, now, um, yeah. the East Coast is kind of starting to blow up as far as MMA goes. Um Especially up north. I mean, now it's it's become legal. The UFC is heading to Madison Square Garden. Of course, Henzo Gracie schools up there. There's a you know Tiger Schulman's up there. I mean, can you kind of ex yeah. explain the landscape of how it's changing a bit and, and kind of it's growing in the uh, Northeast? Wow, it's definitely growing, and we are the last state that needs to have the UFC and MMA. Um, you know, we were the last state to get it legalized. I remember they were petitioning MMA to be legal in New York back in 2008. So, and I was behind those those uh, uh, those campaigns that the UFC was putting together. And here we are, years, years later. Yeah. So, I mean, the scene is definitely changing. Um, you know, and, and I think it's changing uh, for the for the better as an MMA fighter and people realizing and respecting MMA fighters, and it's just becoming more popular. There's a lot of MMA gyms popping up. There's a lot of jiu-jitsu gyms, kickboxing gyms, and, and just gyms with cages, <laughs> which is crazy. Back yeah. when I was training, I had my first fight in 2003. Nobody even knew what this was. I didn't even know what it was. I just said, hey, I can put on gloves and punch people and kick people and throw people. Sign me <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Now, who uh, you got any sponsors or people you want to give a shout-out to? Uh, I mean, I'd definitely like to thank my manager for uh, help, helping me out along this path and uh, my coach, Jason Strout. My manager is Ali, by the way. Um, my coach, Jason Strout. Uh, Mike Jarmillo, who's uh, my actual instructor in jiu-jitsu. He's a black belt under Henzo Gracie. Um, Dave Esposito from Edge Wrestling. Um, man, I got so many guys. Uh, also, Future Legend, they're a clothing company. that uh, They're always behind me. Um, and then all the, the fans and the friends and family that, that still support me after all these years. I've been, I've been fighting for 13 years the ups and the downs of a bumpy career and and I still have a lot of support from uh, from everyone and that's really where where my drive comes from awesome now uh, what are your social media handles oh I mean uh, just uh, look me up it's P-H-I-L-L-I-P-E-N-O-V-E-R that's Felipe Nova um, that's my Instagram that's my Facebook um, and uh, my my Twitter so just uh, at Philip Nova awesome well, Felipe Nover, thank you so much for taking out the time. Huge fight ahead of you, Henan Barrao, UFC Fight Night 95 on September 24th in Brazil. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, brother. Absolutely. You have a good one. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. So there you have it. The 11-6-1 Felipe Nover set to take on Henan Barrao in the co-main event of UFC Fight Night 95 on September 24th 
in Brazil. It should be good. In the meantime, read me on bloodyelbow.com. Follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado, and be a good person.